In the last presentation, we saw how to design the synchronous counters, and we also took one example in which we designed the two bit synchronous up counter. In this presentation, I will follow the same steps, the five steps that I explained you, and we will design the three bit synchronous up counter. So, the step number one, the step number one is to determine the number of flip flops to be used, and also we will decide the type of flip flop. So what we will do, we will determine number of flip flops, number of flip flops, and we will decide type of flip flop. So these two things we have to do in step number one, and uh, you already know the number of flip flop is proportional to the bit of the counter. And here you can see we have to design three bit synchronous up counter. So the number of flip flop, the number of flip flop is equal to three because this bit is nothing but the output of the flip flop and as we have three flip flops we have three outputs and thus the three bit of the counter and i want to implement this three bit synchronous up counter by using the t flip flop so we are done with this step number one and now we will move to this step number two and step number two says we have to make the excitation table for the decided flip flop and we have decided T flip flop, so we have to make the excitation table for T flip flop. So let's make it QN and QN plus 1 are the two inputs and the output is T. We have two variables, so four possible combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Now we have to find out the value for T. When QN is 0, QN is my present state and QN plus 1 is my next state. When present state is 0 and also the next state is 0, it means the memory, the T is going to be 0. And when QN is 0 and the next state is 1, it means we have toggling and for toggling the value of T must be 1. And for the third case also we have toggling and for the last case we have 0 because next state is same as the present state. So this is the excitation table for the T flip flop and step number 2 is now over and now we will move to the step number 3. Step number 3 is and in this step we have to do two things. The first thing is to find out the state diagram and the second thing is to find out the circuit excitation table. So first we will find out the state diagram. 3 bit synchronous counter we have to design and for 3 bit we know the number of state is 2 to the power 3 that is 8. So there are in total 8 states and uh, the maximum count the maximum count is 8 minus 1 that is 7. So our count will start from 0 0 0 and it will end at 1 1 1. So let's make this 8 states first then we will make the circuit excitation table. This is our first state 0 0 0. This is our second state 0 0 1. Then we have 0 1 0. Then 0 1 1. 1 0 0. Then we have 1 0 1. 1 1 0 and finally we have 1 1 1 this is our maximum count and you can see we have to make the up counter so the counting will start from 0 then we will have 0 0 1 0 1 0 that is 2 then 3 4 5 6 7 and again we have 0. So this is the state diagram and by using this state diagram we have to make the circuit excitation table. The first column of the circuit excitation table is the present state and the present state is given by the three outputs that is QC, QB and QA. Then the next column will give us the next state and S is the next state and next state is QC plus, QB plus Q A plus and then we have the flip flop input T C T B and T A. So these are the three columns in our circuit excitation table and we will find out the value of the flip flop input by using the state diagram and then we can implement it by using the K map. 
when we are having the output as 0 0 0 you can see we are going to the next state that is 0 0 1 so the next state is 0 0 1 and uh, when we are on 0 0 1 the next state is 0 1 0 0 1 0 it is very easy to find out the next state for the counter if we are on 0 1 0 the next state is 0 1 1 and when the present state is 3 that is 0 1 1 the next state is 4 1 0 0 if the present state is 4 the next state is 5 if the present state is 5 the next state is 6 and if the present state is 6 the next state is 7 the maximum count and if the present state is 7 the next state is 0 we are again back to 0 so this is what we have derived from this state diagram and now we will find out the value for TC, TB and TA first I will find out the value for TC and it is nothing but the input to our T flip flop and for that we have to compare QC and QC plus that we can do from this table that we derived earlier this is the excitation table this is the present state this one is the next state and by using it we can have the value for T so let's do it for the first case QC is 0 and also QC plus so present state and the next state are same it means the memory and in T flip flop we have memory when the TC is equal to 0 similarly you can see for the second case again we have the same state and for the third case again the same state for the fourth case there is toggling the present state is 0 but the next state is 1 and for toggling TC must be 1 and uh, this case is having the present state 1 and next state as 1 so again we have the memory and uh, for this case also we have TC 0 and the second last case TC is 0 and the last case we have toggling in the same way I will complete TB 0 0 so 0 0 1 toggling so TB is 1 1 1 same state so TB is 0 1 0 toggling so TB is 1 0 0 again same state so TB is 0 0 1 toggling TB 1 1 1 again same state so 0 1 0 toggling and uh, for TA you can see we have always toggling 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 and 1 0 so I will write TA as 1 for all the 8 cases okay now we have TC, TB and TA. We can use a 8 cell K map to find out the minimized value for the three inputs. So I will just paste a 8 cell K map and definitely we require three such maps. So I will paste two more. And the inputs are Q, C, Q, B, Q, A, 0, 0. 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 and this is for TC TC is 0 0 0 1 for the first four cases so 0 0 0 1 and for the last four cases it is 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 we have a pair of 1 here and thus TC is equal to QB QA now we will solve for TB the inputs are QC QB QA 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 it is 0 1 0 1 initially so 0 1 0 1 then we have 0 1 0 1 again so 0 1 0 1 we have group of four ones thus TB is equal to you can see QC is changing from 0 to 1 and QB is also changing from 0 to 1 only Q is not changing and it is 1 so I will write TB equal to QA and now we will solve our last K map and this is for TA the inputs are QC QB QA 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 and 0 1 it is 1 for all the cases so there is no problem in this map we have the group of eight ones and TA is equal to 1 now we will implement it and this is the last step 
the implementation we have three flip-flops three T flip-flops I will make these three T flip-flops this is my first flip-flop this one is second flip-flop and uh, this one is third flip-flop now we will implement the logic that we have evaluated from the k-map this is the a flip-flop this is b flip-flop and this one is c flip-flop t a is the input for the a flip-flop q a is the output of the a flip-flop similarly t b q b t c q c and as we are designing the synchronous counters definitely the clock is simultaneous so we have to give a common clock to all these three flip-flops and this is the way to do it this is clock and uh, now we have to implement the logic first I will implement TA TA is 1 so I will simply give the logic 1 to TA and TB you can see is equal to QA so I will make TB equal to QA and I will simply join them and TC is equal to QB QA and we have to use the AND gate for this so I will uh, use the AND gate here and the input to this AND gate is QB and the second input is QA so I will take QA from here and give it to this two input AND gate the output of this AND gate is then given to TC and uh, you already know the output for the clock is QA so we have to take QA and uh, QB is the second bit this is LSB and QC is our MSB so QA QB QC output of the counter and uh, they will start from 0 0 0 and they will end at 1 1 1 in this way you have to design a 3 bit synchronous counter I hope you got these things and if you have any problem relating to this presentation any doubt you can ask in the comment section